Howdy folks. In this video, I wanna go over a little bit on how to debug WebDriver IO applications using the debugger in VS Code. This is very helpful. It can speed up writing your tests. It'll allow you to set breakpoints, allow you to kind of step through your code. It'll allow you to view variables and what the what are inside the variable without having to do a bunch of like console.logs or browser.debug and different things like that. And this debugger works just like like front end applications when you go into like the terminal or into the uh, developer tools and go to like sources and you, if you wanna like set breakpoints on on different JavaScript code like here, here, so then when the code executes it, it stops there and then you can view the, view the variables. Uh, so the same thing works with, with Node.js and in uh, VS Code. And there's a few different ways you can do this in VS Code. I'm gonna show you two different ones. I'm gonna show you the auto attach one and the JavaScript uh, debug terminal one as well. Uh, both work the same, it's just a matter of how you get to the point. So let's, let's dive right in. So you've got your basic WebDriver application. I've just got a basic describe it. It's kind of just going to the WebDriver homepage. You got a variable here and different things like that. So the first thing, the first way to do it, and it's very simple, is to open up the command palette in VS Code. So that's, you're gonna hit Command Shift P, which opens up this, and you can start searching for auto attach. And you can see I have auto attach here. And then what you can do is just hit always. And this will attach, anytime you run a, a node application in this terminal window here, you are going to be in debug mode. And do that. All right, so now we're, we've got the auto attach done. You can see on the very bottom here, if you can see that, that it's saying always. So the next thing, all we have to do is just run our application. And what you wanna do is you wanna run it from this terminal, and if you're not, sure how to open this terminal go to view and terminal here and that will toggle the terminal in so now if we run our application like it is right now it'll just run like normal uh, I'm just using the base the general uh, web driver commands to run this from the documentation but what we can do what's here is great is let's set a breakpoint on a couple of places so like we're not sure like what's going on like there, there might be a bug and we're not like sure like what the value of foo is. Like maybe foo is dynamic, it was being set somewhere else, like the, the, the data, and we're not really sure. So let's let's run this application or this test, but let's stop the application right here before it does the click. So we kind of see what's going on. So we'll run that, and you can see our here, debugger attached. And it starts the test just like normal. And boom. So now here it stopped before. So we haven't clicked the getting started. So we should still be on the home page. Right. So we're, we're still on the home page because when you put the breakpoint on, it doesn't execute this command until, until you go through it. And if you look on the left, you can see your different variables that it has here as well. So like maybe you wanted to like need the data of foo. You would have had a console.log that before, but now you look, you can see the contents of foo here is one, five, and nine. So it shows you your local variables here, which is extremely helpful. So you don't have to worry about like doing, you know, console.log or browser.debug to do that always. Uh, you can also see the links. So links is a variable. So it's showing the, the variable here of all the links on the home page. All right, so now like say like, all right, we're good. We're kind of see like, we see the, the page. And if also you can do is if you needed to, you can go into, uh, the dev tools on the browser side if you want, if you wanted to like execute commands as well, just like normal, you know, go to your console, try to grab selectors, kind of do everything. You can still, still do that just like normal. Uh, but now let's let's click this. If you look on the right, right here, this actually like might be in the middle. You can move it around. I've, I've moved it over to the right. But when you hit this breakpoint here, you can see the, the play button. When you hit the play button, it's gonna go and execute the program as well. And if there's another breakpoint, it'll execute the program up until this breakpoint here. So you can see I have one here. So when I click play, it's gonna, it's gonna stop here again and we'll be at the same, same place. Um, 
if you didn't have this breakpoint here, you would hit play and then it would just execute the whole program like normal. So let's, let's click that. So boom, so now it stopped here. So now we've clicked our link. So now we're on the, the other page and now we're just doing the expect. So now if we hit play, it'll execute the rest of our program and we'll be done. And you can see we still have the variables here and all of that. We'll hit play, so boom, our, our test is done. And, and it's passed. So that's great. So now you're able to see like variables, um, you'll be able to step through your tests. Uh, another thing I wanna show you is, let's, let's run the command again so we can hit this, I wanna hit this breakpoint again. It's going, all right, it broke here. So instead of hit, so the play button will execute and execute the rest of your tests until there's a breakpoint. but maybe you just want to step through every single command manually. So what you can do is here is you can do the, the step over. So what this is gonna do, is just gonna go step through every next, next command that's gonna be running. So let's step through. Now it's at this and it's stopped. So we're at the getting started page, what we, what we clicked here. Now we step again, it's gonna to go to the for loop. And what you can see is I'm logging the value of i and you'll be able to see this in the console on how it's actually performing. So we click, now we're on the console. So it hasn't actually ran the console yet. So when I click it again, it will run the console. So now it's zero. So we basically stopped this loop. So we click it again, click it one more time. Now it's going here, now it's at one. So we're just stepping through. So we click it again, it's on four. Now it's at this point. Now it's at the, the console and boom. So now you can kind of like step over your code if you needed to, to, to do anything. And again, if we wanted to, we can hit, hit play and it'll run the rest of our code. So that way we used auto attach. The other way you can do it is you can also, you can also add a in the exec arg, you can add inspect to your config file if you want. And what that will do is it'll only run the debugger when you have, when you, so we're going to, let's go to, you know, command shift P to get to our command palette. You can do it with only a flag. So then you can, so if you're for some reason running other uh, node applications in the same terminal, maybe you don't want to debug those, but just the web jar one. So you can, you can only attach the debugger when that flag is set. Um, but for the most part, you can probably just keep always and you're fine. The other way we're gonna do is the JavaScript debug terminal. And this is very simple. All you have to do is go over to, while you're on the terminal here, you can just create a new one. Instead of just bash, you can, you can select JavaScript debug terminal. And it looks just like the other terminal. The only thing is that it's just automatically in debug by, mode by default. So we can actually turn um, auto attach off and now just run our command and you can see debug is already already here so it's going to do everything we did it's going to perform everything we just like we did with the last time so it bro broke here we have all the same options here um, so it's just just different ways that you can debug so we'll click play that so yeah whatever whatever is more comfortable for you uh, use use whatever suit you needs, but I'll put this post this link here with the documentation from VS Code on on how to do it. Uh, but really, it's it's pretty simple. Um, if you're using the old synchronous mode of, of WebDriver IO, you're gonna run into some issues with with this. Uh, I haven't used it in a while, but I remember when I was when we were using sync mode, ran into issues. But if you're using async, which is the way you should be doing it and going forward, uh, the debugging should should work just fine.